Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 3 Lesson 7 on Exploring Proportional Relationships. So in the last lesson we looked at what it meant for two variables to be proportional to one another. And essentially what that really boils down to, and I'm going to hammer on this again and again and again, is when two variables are proportional to one another, their ratio, one of them divided by the other, is always the same number. All right. Not only that, but one of the variables can always be calculated as simply a constant times the other variable. And we'll get into a lot of different problems in the next few lessons, including this one, that kind of really hammers that idea home. But for now, let's just get into it right away. You're going to need your calculator a little bit in this lesson, but mostly for the second for the second exercise. And if you don't have one, you can probably do most of the arithmetic sort of longhand. It's just going to take you a little bit longer. Anyway, the first exercise we don't need our calculator for, and let's get into it right now. Here we go, an introductory problem, exercise number one. The height of a corn plant is proportional to how long it's been growing. A corn plant has grown 15 inches tall in six days. Work this problem without using your calculator. Letter A asks us, what is the ratio of the height to the days in simplest form, expressed as a reduced fraction and as a unit rate? All right, so we've been working with ratios throughout this entire unit because it's kind of the point of this unit. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video now, use the fact that you know that the corn plant is 15 inches tall in six days to figure out the answer to letter A. Go ahead. All right, so we want the ratio of the height to the days, right? And we almost always are going to do that in fraction form because then that allows us to use what we know about fractions to work with it. So we're going to take our height, 15 inches. All right, we're going to divide it by the days, six days, to produce a fraction. Now, this fraction can be easily reduced because both 15 and 6 are divisible by 3. So I divide 15 by 3 and I get 5 inches. And I divide 6 by 3 and I get 2 days. Now, one of the great things about this ratio is it tells us something that's like very clear. For every 2 days, the corn plant is going to grow another 5 inches. So after 4 days, it's going to be 10 inches. After 6 days, it's going to be 15 inches, etc. But this problem asks us to express it as a reduced fraction. There we go. And as a unit rate. Now for a unit rate, what we really want to do is we want to divide the numerator by the denominator, right? We always get a unit rate by dividing the numerator by the denominator. Now we could do that and get a decimal, or we could do that and get a fraction. That the problem is not specific on. Let me actually convert this to a mixed fraction or a mixed number. 2 goes into 5 two times. It leaves us with a remainder of 1, which gives us 2.5. If you prefer the decimal form, of course, we don't need any long division to figure this out. It's just 2.5. Now that's the unit rate, but it doesn't have any units on it. So let's review how you think about the units of a rate. And these, this is so, so important, right? If I want to think about what that 2.5 is, all I have to do is look at the units of the numerator, which are inches. And we could abbreviate it, but I'm going to write it out. Literally, the fraction bar then becomes the word per. And then it's the units of the denominator, right? And what's so fa fantastic about that is it tells us now something very specific, right? This corn plant is growing 2.5 inches for every day that happens. For every day that passes, it gets 2.5 inches taller. So let's look at now at letter B. All right, we're just going to have some graph paper. So letter B asks us to do the following. Fill in the table below. Right? And then eventually in letter C, we're going to graph what we have. Now, one thing that's absolutely key about all proportional relationships, every time two variables are proportional, then when one of them is zero, the other one's zero. All right? And that just comes from the fact that one of them is always a multiple of the other one, and when you multiply zero by anything, you get zero. So they always will go through sort of the point zero, zero, if you will. Now, they, we already knew that after six days, right, it would be 15 inches tall, so we already have that point. All right, we need to fill in the rest of the table. It's actually quite easy. We could use the unit rate, but keep in mind that this ratio right here tells us, we didn't quite get that circled, this ratio right here tells us that every two days that go by, the plant grows another five inches. So that's easy, 
right? After two days, the plant's going to be five inches tall, right? After another two days, we're going to add another five there, so that's going to be ten inches tall. Look at how the pattern just then continues, right? At six days, we've added another five inches for fifteen. After eight days, we're going to be at twenty inches tall, and after ten days, twenty-five inches, okay? Let's now use this data in letter C. Let's take a look at what it says. Graph the information from the table on the grid to the right. What do you notice about the pairs? All right, so it's almost impossible for me to get both the table and the graph grid on all at once, but I've got most of it on there. The only pair I'm missing is 0, 0, so let's keep this on the board and let's start to graph. Right, 0, 0 is what we also know as the origin. We know that after two days, we're going to be at 5 inches. After four days, we're going to be at 10 inches etc. What I'd like you to do is take a moment and finish graphing all of these pairs of data. All right, let's finish it up. So after six days, we're at 15. All right, after eight days, we're at 20. I can still fit that one on. And after 10 days, we're at 25. All right, so that's all the data from our graph, right? We're also supposed to talk about what we might notice about these. So what do you notice about all these points? What seems to be obvious? Well, it seems to be obvious that they all lie on a straight line. And that will always, always be true when you have two variables that are proportional to one another. They will always go through the point 0, 0, and they will always then form a straight line. All right? In fact, we can actually graph that straight line. Let me see if I can do it from here. Um, I've got my line. We'll just go with this, and let me stretch my line out, maybe extend it a little bit past the point, and now let's go back to the pen. All right. Um, yeah, sure. Good. All right, we've got our pen back. So we've got this straight line. Now let's take a look at letter D. All right, fill in the point, one comma what from the graph. What does this missing value represent? All right, now this is a little bit tricky, but what I want you to do is I want you to look at the graph that's got the line graphed on it. All right, and I want you to say, what is the y-coordinate on this graph when the x-coordinate is equal to 1? Pause the video now and see if you can figure this out. All right, so it's simple enough. We go over here to 1 on the axis and we go up and we're right at this point. My pen's a little bit big here, but it should be pretty obvious that that point is halfway between 2 and 3. It's at 2.5. So let's fill that in. All right. Now, what does that 2.5 represent? That should look familiar, right? And in fact, what it represents is the unit rate. All right. And it always will. And it makes sense, right? Because what the unit rate is, is how much the y variable is changing, the thing on this axis, compared to one unit, one unit of the x variable. So, right, that's exactly what this is. When we're at 1 on the x-axis, we know how much the y has changed for just that one unit, 2.5. So this represents the unit rate. All right. Let's play around a little bit more with this in the next exercise. For this one, you may want to have your calculator simply because it'll make the calculations easier, but you don't absolutely need it. Let's take a look at exercise two. A local gas station has created a graph that shows how much customers will have to pay based on how many gallons of gasoline they've bought. Letter A asks us what two features about this graph tell you that it's a proportional relationship. All right. Well, I tried to harp on these a bunch in exercise number one, but when you look at this graph, if you're asked, you know, is this a proportional relationship, the answer should be yes based on two things. What do you think those two things are? Pause the video now and see if you can write them down.
All right, there are two important things about graphs of proportional relationships. One, it passes through, passes through the point zero comma zero. And two, it is a straight line. Every proportional relationship, every single one of them will pass through this point and then it'll be some straight line, right? It won't be kind of like curvy data or something like that and it won't pass through one of these points on the y-axis. Let's take a look at letter B. All right, letter B asks us, what is the ratio of the cost of gas to the gallons of gasoline? In other words, the constant of proportionality. We've looked at that term before. That's the ratio, right, in its most reduced form of the two variables. All right, well, how can we figure this out? Pause the video now and see if you can figure out what the constant of proportionality is. Well, to figure that out, you really need to just have one single point off of this graph. All right, you know, a single point. Wow, that didn't work. Let's go back into that. All right, a single point on this graph other than the point zero, zero. One of the easiest ones is simply the first one, that point. That point happens to be at an x coordinate of four and a y coordinate of 13. Specifically, right, $13 for four gallons of gas. So if I want the ratio, then even with units, I wanna think about $13 divided by four gallons. Now again, that's actually easy enough to do with long division, but that's not really the point of what we're doing today. So maybe I just take my calculator out. I do a little bit of a $13 divided by four gallons, and I end up getting 325. Right, there's our constant of proportionality. Now let's take a look at letter C. Let me just move this a little bit out of the way. We'll just throw it right there. Letter C. What does your answer from B represent in the real world? Well, let's talk about this a little bit. You can almost always interpret the constant of proportionality if you think about what its units are. And remember, the units of a ratio will always be the units of the numerator, which are dollars, per one unit of the denominator. And then it makes it very clear, right? What this ratio represents in the real world is the price of a single gallon of gasoline, right? $3.25 per gallon. So the cost of a single, where's that G? There it is, a single gallon of gas. Okay, again, hammering very important issues home, letter D asks us the following. What point does it represent on the graph? So that constant proportionality actually represents a point on the graph. Plot this point as well as you can on the graph. So it's a little bit of a tricky point to plot, but why don't you see if you can plot the point that somehow corresponds to that $3.25 per gallon. All right, simple enough. The unit rate will always be plotted, always, always, always at the point one comma the unit rate. And we can see that sort of on the graph. If we go over here to one and we go up here to the graph, we can see if we look really closely, right, really closely that that point is just barely above three on the y-axis, right? And the y-axis represents the cost of the gas that we're buying. So we can literally see, ah, after one gallon of gas, we're paying $3.25. All right, the unit rate will always, always, always show up on a graph of a proportional relationship at, as one comma the unit rate. And now let's do a couple applied problems. Letter E. If a customer bought $11 of, uh, sorry, 11 gallons of this gasoline, how much would she pay? Let C be the cost, solve a proportion for the value of C. 
Now, it's a little bit silly to actually solve a proportion to find out how much she paid, but it's also kind of, you know, it kind of illustrates a good point. So what do I want to do? The cost is to 11 gallons, right, if we set up a proportion, as $3.25 is to one gallon. Right? We're literally just solving this proportion. Now, again, it's very, very simple because of the way this all looks. We could still think about solving it using that method of cross multiplying, right? But really, what do we get there? We get 1 times C, which is just C, and then on the other side, predictably, we get 325 times 11, right? And this should make all the sense in the world. Let's talk about this for a second, right? Because what are we really saying? We're saying if I want to know the cost for 11 gallons of gasoline, I'm going to take 11 and I'm going to multiply it by the unit cost of gas, 325 a gallon. And again, although this is easy enough to do um, sort of without a calculator, there's no real need to waste our time doing it. So we'll just do 325 times 11 and we'll get a co total cost of $35.75. All right, easy enough. Final problem. Letter F. Jenna has a truck with a tank that holds 20 gallons. If she has $60, will she have enough money to fill the entire tank? Justify. All right, pause the video now and see if she's got enough money. All right, well, there's many, many different ways of justifying the fact that she's not going to have enough money. All right, lots of different ways. One way to do it is to actually just figure out how much money she would need in order to buy 20 gallons of gas. And here, I don't think I'm going to set it up as a proportion. I'm simply going to do the following. The cost for $20 of gas will be the 20 times the 325, right? 325 is my unit rate. I'll multiply it by 20. Uh-oh. There we go again. Technology. Oh, well. 20 times 325 gives me $65. Probably would have been easier just doing that by hand. And so the answer is no. She has five dollars less than she needs. So that's one great way to do it. Another nice way to do it would have been to look at another ratio to say, well, if in order to buy twenty dollars of uh, sorry twenty gallons of gas with sixty dollars, I would do the ratio of sixty to twenty, and I would need a per unit price of three dollars per gallon of gas. Since it's three dollars and twenty-five cents the gasoline is too expensive. That's another way of doing it, but probably the best way is just to say, hey, at $3.25 for 20 gallons, I need $65, and that's not going to be enough money. All right, let's wrap this up. So today, we explored proportional relationships, and we kind of looked at them both from the perspective of those ratios that give us unit rates. We looked at the fact that you can see the unit rate on a graph if you look at what the y value is when the x value is 1. And we also looked at two really important features of proportional graphs. One, that they go through the origin, and two, that they fall along a straight line. Exceptionally important. We're going to be working with this a ton in the future lessons, including the next one. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.